King Solomon is well known from his richness. But how became a king? History is meaningful if we learn from it. Technology changed a lot, but the basic human feelings and needs are the same. This episode part of a series which speaks about people who are mentioned in the Bible. Thanks for all who may would like to support this channel. Please, if you can subscribe or give a like or a meaningful comment. In the description you may find other opportunities to support this channel. Enjoy. King of Israel from 1037 to 998 BCE, son of King David of the Judahline. And David began to comfort Bathsheba his wife, the Bible says after narrating the death of David's son conceived through his illegal dealings with Bathsheba. He also entered to her and were together with with her. She eventually gave birth to a boy, whose name was Solomon. And he was loved by God himself. For the love of Jehovah, he sent through Nathan the prophet, and he named him Jedidiah. Shemaiah, Shobab, and Nathan were Solomon's full brothers, sons of David and Bathsheba. Before Solomon's birth, Jehovah had promised David that he would have a son, whose name would be Solomon, and that he would construct a house to his honor. The name Jedidiah, which means, beloved of Jah, appears to have been given to David as a sign that Jehovah had now blessed his marriage to Bathsheba and approved the fruitage that resulted. However, this was not the name by which the child was known. Solomon, from a word meaning, peace, was undoubtedly associated with God's covenant with David, in which he stated that David's son would construct the temple. Solomon's reign was primarily one of peace. Solomon is first mentioned in the Bible after his birth, during David's old age. David had earlier pledged to Bathsheba that Solomon would succeed him on the throne, most likely because of God's word. The prophet Nathan was aware of this. It is unclear whether Solomon's half-brother Adonijah was aware of David's oath or intent. In any event, Adonijah attempted to usurp the throne in a manner similar to that of Absalom. Because of the king's frailty and the fact that Adonijah had the support of Joab the army general and Abiathar the priest, he believed he would succeed. It was still traitorous, an effort to steal the kingdom while David was still alive and without David's or Jehovah's permission. Adonijah also revealed his cunning when he planned a sacrifice at Enrogel to be crowned king, but only invited the king's other sons and men of Judah, as well as the king's servants, leaving out Solomon, Nathan the prophet, Zadok the priest, and the mighty men who had fought alongside David, including Benaiah their leader. This suggests that Adonijah saw Solomon as a competitor and a hindrance to his objectives. Nathan, who had always been faithful to Jehovah and David, was on high alert. He sent Bathsheba with instructions to warn the king of the plot, and then he came in himself, asking David if he had allowed Adonijah's proclamation as king. David acted swiftly and decisively, dispatching Zadok the priest and Nathan to remove Solomon to Gion, safe in the hands of Benaiah and his warriors. Solomon was to be mounted on the king's personal she-mule, denoting a high honor to the one riding, in this case, that he was successor to the kingship. Solomon was anointed and proclaimed as king once David's instructions were followed. Adonijah and his fellow conspirators ran in terror and bewilderment when they heard music from Gion, not far away, and people chanting, let King Solomon live. By refusing to let retribution tarnish his ascension to the throne, Solomon foreshadowed the tranquility that would distinguish his reign. Solomon would almost certainly have died if the situation had been reversed. Solomon sent notice to the sanctuary, where Adonijah sought refuge, and had him brought before him. Solomon then dismissed Adonijah to his house, telling him that he would live unless anything terrible was discovered in him. Before his death, David gave Solomon the solemn mandate to maintain the responsibility to Jehovah your God by walking in his ways, by observing his statutes, commandments, judicial judgments, and testimonies. He also told him not to allow Joab and Shimei walk down into Sheol in peace, or die in peace, and to treat the sons of Barzillai the Gileadite with loving affection. Prior to this, David most likely gave Solomon directions for the construction of the temple 
passing on to him the architectural blueprint that had come to him by inspiration. The rulers of Israel present were given orders by David to assist Solomon's son in the construction of the temple. The people anointed Solomon as king and Zadok as priest once more on this occasion. Solomon receives God's favor early in his reign, when he begins to sit on Jehovah's throne as king in place of David his father, and to make a success of the kingship and grow strength in it. Solomon didn't have to wait long to carry out David's orders on Joab. This was triggered by Adonijah's actions, which showed that despite Solomon's clemency, he still had ambition. You yourself well know that the kingship was to have been mine, and it was toward me that all Israel had set their face for me to become king. But the kingdom turned and came to be my brother's, for it was from God that it became his, Adonijah said to Solomon's mother. Adonijah admitted that Jehovah was behind Solomon's enthronement, but his plea that followed these remarks was a cunning attempt to steal the throne. To Bathsheba, he said, Please tell Solomon the king, that he should marry Abishag the Shunammite to me. Adonijah may have believed that, with the help of Joab and Abiathar, he could create an uprising against Solomon by seizing David's nurse, who was thought to be David's concubine despite the fact that David had no relations with her. By tradition, a king's wives and concubines could only become the spouses of his legal successor, therefore adopting such brides was seen as a claim to the throne. When Bathsheba, unaware of Adonijah's deception, relayed his request to Solomon, Solomon mistook it for a bid for the throne and instantly dispatched Benaiah to kill Adonijah. Solomon then turned his focus to Adonijah's conspirators. Abiathar was removed from the priesthood in response to God's message against the house of Eli, but he was spared death because he had carried the ark before David and shared his anguish. Zadok took Abiathar's place. Meanwhile, Joab fled to grasp hold of the altar's horns after hearing of Solomon's action, but he was slain by Benaiah at Solomon's command. Solomon also put Shimei under oath to follow certain rules, because he had cursed Solomon's father David. When Shimei broke this restriction three years later, Solomon had him put to death. As a result, David's command to Solomon was entirely carried out. People were sacrificing on numerous, high places, throughout Solomon's reign since there was no house of Jehovah, even though the tabernacle was at Gibeon and the Ark of the Covenant was in a tent on Zion. Despite the fact that Jehovah had stated that his name would be placed on Jerusalem, he appears to have permitted this practice until the temple was completed. Solomon presented a thousand burnt sacrifices at Gibeon, also known as the Great High Place. In a dream, Jehovah appeared to him, telling him, Request what I should give you. Solomon asked for a wise, discerning, and obedient heart rather than wealth, glory, or victory in order to be able to judge Israel. Solomon's simple prayer was so pleasing to Jehovah that he granted it. Solomon's humble request pleased Jehovah so much that he bestowed upon him not only what he had requested, but also riches and glory, such that there would not have happened to be any among the kings like you all your days. And if you would walk in my ways by observing my regulations and commandments, just as David your father walked, I will also lengthen your days, Jehovah added. Shortly after, Solomon revealed that God had really blessed him with judicial wisdom when two prostitutes presented a tough matter of parental identity. This significantly increased Solomon's authority among the people. In the next episode you will see what we know about Solomon construction activities.